Hello, everyone. Today on The Final Bar, we will do our normal Monday routine. Let's look at the market from three directions, top-down macro, bottom-up stock picking sector rotation. We'll talk about the relative strength in utilities, offense over defense, and value versus growth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a sunny but smoky Redmond, Washington. We're fighting wildfires in the area. My family recovering from being under the weather last week and uh, excited to be back with you live here today on Monday, September 12th. We'll talk about sort of this general rotation back into risk assets. A lot of strength in the markets on Friday uh, going into the close, continuing to push to the upside uh, today with the S&P ending the day Right around 41.10, pretty decent move continuing to the upside. Great schedule this week, by the way. We have a couple of really good guests lined up for you. Tomorrow on the 13th, we have Dave Landry of DaveLandry.com. On Wednesday, Mr. Sector Rotation, Julius DeKempener coming through our show. And then on Thursday, the 15th, John Kosar from Asbury Research. Three really good conversations, good perspectives to help us make sense of things in uncertain times. By the way, all three of those guests will be participating in ChartCon. We are preparing a fantastic event for you coming up on October 7th and 8th. It's a Friday and Saturday, two full days of excellent, unique content. I wanted to talk today about our live trading rooms. Aaron Swenlin of Decision Point and Dave Landry will both be hosting live trading rooms during the uh, the uh, ChartCon event, both on Friday. So while the markets are open, you, oh, you literally get to look over their shoulder as they're analyzing charts real time, talking about entry and exit points and addressing your questions as they come up live in the chat room. That is just one piece of a fantastic event you do not want to miss. Go to stockcharts.com slash chartcon. Members get a deeply discounted rate and it is a perfect time to take a free trial of your membership if you've considered that because you can uh, attend a chart con for a discounted rate as well. Go to stockcharts.com slash chart con to sign up for that event today. Let's continue on today's show with our market recap. What's been happening in the uh, in the markets from a technical perspective? And I tell you, it's been a story rotating back to risk on. We talked before I was off last week uh, about the importance of that S&P 3900 level. And we're going to look at the chart of the S&P in a uh, few moments. But if you've been paying attention to what's happened in the last week and a half, you've seen a nice bounce off of that predicted level of support. That was a Fibonacci level we talked about, beautifully played out with a move to the upside. And now the question mark is, what's next? So I think either way, if you're if you're bullish or bearish, big picture on the S&P 500, a bounce off of 3,900 made a ton of sense. Now it's looking at the evidence that the charts provide to tell you what where we have, might be headed now that we've had that bounce off of that level of support. So the S&P getting above 4,100, Pretty meaningful. We'll look at the chart of the S&P here in a, in a few moments to get into the details. But before we do that, NASDAQ up about 1.3%. The VIX actually moving higher today, which is a little unusual. Usually a, a higher uh, S&P, higher NASDAQ, usually a lower VIX. Uh, but you're getting uh, increased volatility as we get uh, increase in risk asset prices. Um, so the VIX uh, right around 24 as we close the session today. With other markets, and this is an interesting one, 10-year uh, yields continue to push higher. Uh, long bond yields above 3.5% now, 10-year yields approaching 3.4%. So we're approaching the long-term high that we made uh, back in June, if I remember right, uh, and kind of coming back to the level. We're now above the high that we set back in 2018. So higher rates we've talked about for quite some time. It's certainly been a big part of the story in 2022, uh, but appearing to be further a part of the story here as we go forward. Now, why are risk assets able to move higher? They're given some room because the dollar is a little bit weaker here. So the dollar index uh, moving lower, the UUP, which is the bullish dollar ETF that we track, down about half a percent. Commodities as a whole moving uh, stronger today. Silver price is actually leading the way to the upside, up 5% using the SLV. Gold price is moving higher as well. And there's an interesting uh, look at the chart of gold here. We'll try to get to that here in a second, if I can uh, remember. 
uh, because gold, the potential double bottom to pay attention to at a key level of support, a level where we've bounced off before going back over the last uh, couple of years, all of the uh, major uh, uh, commodity ETFs that we track all in the green today. Mixed results over in crypto land, but Bitcoin pushing higher, very different than some of the other ones. And, and usually you will see, uh, often see all of these moving to the upside or the downside uh, together. Today's one of those weird days where Bitcoin actually up in a big way, Ether actually down in a, in a fairly big way, about two to 3% in both directions there. Ether around 1730 and Bitcoin prices pushing up to 22,500. Uh, just briefly talking about sectors, and then we'll continue this big picture discussion as we recap uh, what's happening uh, um, with the uh, major uh, asset classes. But energy really leading the way higher today, followed by technology. So it's sort of value and growth, both sort of getting it done today. And then utilities, which is a fairly defensive sector. So this is one of those everything up kind of days. The worst performing sectors, consumer staples and communication services, both up you know, about half a percent or a little uh, under that. Let's look at a chart of the S&P 500 here briefly and take a look at some key levels. So, you know, I was not paying a ton of attention to the uh, markets last week um, uh, over the weekend, started to sort of refresh some of the charts and, and take a deeper look in preparation for uh, coming back today. And I was really struck by how the S&P bounced off of that 3,900 level. Now, that's an important level using Fibonacci retracements, right? If you take the low from June, you take the high from August. 38.2% of the way down is around 4060. We actually just closed there on a Friday session and pushed above there uh, back again today. 61.8% is right around 3900, which is why we identified that as a likely uh, area of potential support. We've now bounced higher. Now, if you're bullish, you absolutely see this as a is an inverted head and shoulders bottoming pattern, right? The low in June, the higher low in May, the higher low in September, and isn't this the most bullish setup ever? So the answer is yes and no. It's bullish if you like the fact that we've made a higher low around 3,900. Absolutely. So being long this sort of market, right, expecting further upside, I think is completely justifiable from a technical perspective, as long as you key in on that as your limited downside risk. Meaning if you go below 3,900, if we would reverse tomorrow and just start pushing back toward the lows, we undercut 3,900, I would have to question sort of that bullish configuration. Cause all of a sudden this is a little less of a higher low and maybe the beginning of, you know, sort of a pause before the further downside. But as long as we hold 3,900 on any pullback certainly is starting to be a higher low. And Charles Dow tells us that's the beginning of further upside. Here's the problem with the inverted head and shoulders thesis. You need to break a neckline to complete that pattern, which means the S&P would have to get all the way up to 44, 44, 50 um, to be able to complete that rotation. So if you're saying inverted head and shoulders, the technical, uh, you know, sort of traditional pattern analysis says that's actually not a val valid pattern because you'd have to rally so much to, uh, to generate that. So by that point, it probably looks like something different. Focusing in on the higher low, absolutely. Focusing on the momentum improving, absolutely. And let's pay attention to those key levels. 4,200, by the way, is a key Fibonacci level to pay attention to as well. That's where we peaked last in late August. I did want to hit on the chart of gold here very briefly. I mentioned that as a potential double bottoming uh, sort of pattern. And uh, you know, again, double bottom pattern is a pretty classic part of the technical toolkit. You establish a level of support, you retest those levels, and that's often where you'd expect buyers to come in, right? The buyers clearly saw that GLD was a, was a good buy around 158 back in mid-July. Potentially, they still see it here. This is the same place that gold bottomed out in the first quarter of 2021, right around $158, 100, 157, 158. This, I could see the argument for a bounce, uh, at the very least, a meaningful bounce from these levels. 168 was the swing high from August. That might be somewhere to look. Bullish momentum divergence, which is important here. Lower lows in price, higher lows in RSI. You didn't get a lot of those in the equity space, but you're certainly getting it right now uh, here in gold in the last week or so. That might be a chart to watch, sort of a bottom fishing candidate if you're looking for uh, value opportunities. Let's continue on today's show talking about sector rotation. So on Monday, we do three phases. We start big picture. We talked about the S&P bouncing off of 3,900, that 4,200 level being important. Talk about a potential double bottom in gold. Let's look at the sector picture. And as I mentioned in the uh, market recap at the beginning, energy, the number one sector today. And that's been part of the story here, right? The strength in energy, a big part of the story of 2022, but that changed a lot, right? From mid-June to mid-August, where it was all about growth, sectors like energy struggling in a uh, in a big way. But now pushing back to the upside, now, now some of the growthy sectors like tech and consumer discretionary, not too far behind 
um, today. So sort of everything pushing to the upside, all the risk assets essentially working uh, in some way today. But let's look at some of those sectors a couple of different ways. First, we'll start with the uh, RRG, the relative rotation graph. As I mentioned, I have Julius DeKempener coming through the show on Wednesday of this week. Always learn a ton from talking with Julius about his uh, methodology, the relative rotation graphs. We'll start there as we look at the 11 S&P sectors, how they're rotating around the S&P, which is at the middle of the crosshairs here where you see the 100 lines across. That's basically the benchmark. And this is all driven on relative strength. Up and to the right means it's outperforming and improving momentum. Down and to the left means it's underperforming the benchmark with weakening momentum. And everything else sort of rotates in general in a clockwise direction. So a couple of things that jump out at me as I'm looking with fresh eyes at the uh, RRG today. Consumer discretionary, the best performing sector. If you look at what is in the leading quadrant, it's consumer discretionary, technology, and uh, industrials. But consumer discretionary, farthest from the zero line and uh, heading northeast in the strongest direction. That's certainly showing some renewed strength. Now, the equal weighted version, not as impressive as the cap weighted version. And it tells you that the strength in the XOY is most likely dominated by the mega cap stocks there. That's uh, Amazon, uh, Tesla, and Home Depot. Try to, uh, if we have time to look at those three stocks as we get to our uh, our next segment, shifting stocks. Uh, but those three names most likely providing some strength. Anytime you see the cap-weighted version doing a lot better than the equal-weighted version, it's usually the uh, outperformance of the mega cap names that are getting it done. Energy is actually heading due north as well, which is impressive. Still in the weakening quadrant, but an area to uh, to focus on. If you look at some of the top performers today, in the energy space. Names like uh, Apache and Hess are in the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500. So nice movement to the upside and uh, and potentially a reinitiation of that uptrend that we had been talking about for quite some time. <clears throat> Where are we seeing some relative weakness? Well, communication services, again, as we've mentioned, I feel many times in this last, in this calendar year of 2022, communication services has been a relatively weak sector. Look at the long-term relative strength been pretty negative, had been showing some signs of improvement, but rotating once again, the, what I call the direction of deterioration heading southwest on the chart. That just means it's underperforming and the, and the momentum is really pushing to the downside. So it's really not getting it done on a relative basis. Now, there are areas of that sector, which certainly at times have been very, uh, have been very strong, but as a group, uh, it's not doing particularly well. Also noting the weakness in consumer staples and healthcare. And if you just Focus on those two sectors, consumer discretionary strengthening, consumer staples weakening. That's sort of that traditional offense versus defense discussion that we often uh, have on the show, thinking of risk on versus risk off. And when consumer discretionary is working and consumer staples are not, that tells me that investors are rotating more to things you want over things you need. That is more of a risk on posturing within the consumer space, sort of validates this bounce that we've seen off of that S&P 3900 level. Let's look at the 11 sectors using the um, candle glance function. So this is where we can take all 11 sectors along with the S&P 500 in the bottom right. Take a look at this uh, this chart. And again, while I would not encourage you all to try to uh, catch COVID, I would encourage you guys to take a step back at times if you could. One of the best things I feel like I was able to do was not look at the markets for a couple of days because then you look at it with fresh eyes. It's sort of like taking a vacation from uh, the charts. And when you when you look again, what jumps out at you, right? It's very easy to get caught up in the moment to moment flickering ticks or the noise of the daily market activity. Take a step back and see what sort of rotations you can uh, identify. So what stands out at you uh, for you when you're looking at these 11 uh, charts? I'll tell you what jumps out at me as I'm glancing around here. Number one, the strength in utilities, right? So out of all 11 sectors and then including the S&P 500, how many of these are at or near new highs? There's only one of them, right? Utilities, which is making a new swing high over the last uh, week. Uh, the XLU showing renewed strength, a nice move off of the uh, the low uh, recently around 74, sort of a, a move from mid-June to mid-August, pulling back and then regaining all of that pullback uh, from uh, from late August, making a new 52-week closing high uh, today. So nice move in a sector in general, which tends to be fairly uh, defensive. You can see how the market's obviously been struggling uh, for uh, much of the last uh, the last uh, eight to 10 months, but you can see the utilities on a relative basis have actually been fairly consistently positive, uh, which overall, I, I in d despite what you think, bullish or bearish or neutral or whatever, I think you always wanna be in areas where the relative strength is strong and improving and utilities certainly uh, fit the bill. The other one that seems like an outlier as I'm looking at these charts 
is the energy sector, right? The XLE. And if you look at this chart, you can see uh, how we've made a pattern of higher lows, right? And again, coming off of the 200-day moving average in July, I'm struck by the fact that the XLE tested its 50-day, pulled back, rotated higher, making a higher low in early August, making another higher low uh, here uh, about a week ago, right? In early September, and now rotating to the upside. Charles Dow taught us a long time ago, an uptrend is a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. That's what the XLE is doing. So when I'm looking at the charts of uh, DVN or FANG or Apache or Hess or any of those names that I mentioned uh, showing some strength again today, I'm struck not just by the strength today, but this rotation uh, where you'd see an energy bin, obviously a big leader in the first six months of the year, pulling back there as the growth stocks worked in the uh, the beginning of the summer, and now once again, rotating back to the uh, upside. Now, the relative strength is not overwhelmingly positive just yet, but certainly heading in the uh, in the right direction. The price uh, certainly heading in the right direction. <clears throat> After that, what else stands out? I tell you what, it's a lot of the sectors are fairly homogenous in terms of how they've, uh, how they've appeared, right? Things like real estate and technology, healthcare, industrials, materials, financials, all putting in a pretty good a higher low. And so as you think about what would cause you to be in this market, what would cause you to cut your losses if things would reverse, I think a lot of the charts like industrials or financials, any ones that I, uh, that I mentioned, are giving you some pretty clear levels, some pretty natural stops. And what I mean is we've rallied and you have the 50-day moving average just below on the uh, industrial sector. You have the swing low there around 9150. We hold those levels on a pullback and this is still a constructive chart. Those levels don't hold on a pullback then you have to question a bullish thesis overall in the market. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with my next segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. It's so good to be back live with you here on uh, Stock Charts TV. Uh, we have a lot of great content coming up for you. Again, we have got ChartCon coming up in about a month, and I encourage you to uh, to check that uh, check that event out. A couple other announcements before we continue on with our show. First off, we'll do a mailbag segment on Tuesday's show on tomorrow uh, and also on Friday of this week. And we'd love to feature one of your questions live on the air. Our email is thefinalbar at stockcharts.com. We're on Twitter at finalbarsctv. And we're on YouTube. Put a comment below the video you're watching on our Stock Charts YouTube channel. We'll gather all those questions. Hope to answer yours live on the air. Also, go to StockChartsTV.com. That's our on-demand platform. We have so much great content from a fantastic group of guest commentators and contributors. All of it is available for free at StockChartsTV.com or on your mobile device. Just search for Stock Charts TV on demand. Let's continue on today's show with our next segment, Shifting Stocks. This completes our three-part approach to market analysis is really just a little microcosm of the work that I tend to do and many technical analysts do in trying to make sense of things visually. Start big picture, talk about the big major assets, go to the sectors, think about thematic movements, and then go to individual stocks. And don't miss that last piece because that's where a lot of the really interesting movements often can uh, can emerge. I wanted to start with the energy sector just because we mentioned the strength in energy uh, before the break. Uh, and I'm struck by uh, a number of the uh, energy stocks, or the S&P Energy members being in the top, uh, the top performers list today. You're seeing a renewed uh, strength in the uh, in the energy space. Apache is a good example of that, closing right around forty dollars today, up about five percent, so outperforming the uh, the market very handily. Look at the trend in the relative strength, and you can see that long term uptrend really from the fourth quarter of last year to the peak in mid June. <clears throat> now this is where the energy sector sector topped out. This is when things started to pull back. And you know, uh, as you know, that the uh, the FANG and FANG-like sectors, the growth areas in the market, technology and others really started to do well during that period. Energy pulled back and Apache, a pretty orderly move right down to the 200-day moving average, actually undercut it a little bit, but found support right around $30 a share from there, rotating back to the upside. Now, look at this rotation we've seen, the move back above moving average support, retesting the 200-day from above and now rotating back to the upside. So as long as this pattern continues, you keep making higher highs, higher lows, you you know as you as you pull back, we uh, eclipse the previous lows. Think of a, a you know if you bought the stock back at 30, 
Every time we go higher and make a higher low, keep bumping up your stop to that level. That's like Charles Dow's dream of just a beautiful uptrend where you keep locking in additional paper gains and you limit your losses if and when the market turns lower. As long as the uptrend persists, that's a pretty decent way of playing uh, this sort of uh, this sort of chart. And given the strength that you've seen off the lows, I think further upside is uh, is certainly uh, certainly possible. Now, where do you go from here? That's the question, right? Getting about forty two fifty, which is the swing high from late August, I think opens the way on this chart back to the previous highs, back to the all time highs, just about fifty dollars a share. It's a nice move. It's about a twenty percent move above uh, current level. So while this chart seems very compressed, this is a big nice gain. Uh, for uh, you know, just a, a little bit on the uh, on the chart but that shows you the pullback that we've seen and the potential for these names to recover um, some of those uh, those previous uh, losses. Hess, by the way, is another one in the uh, in the top ten list today. I like this sort of rotation. This is a bit of a cup and handle like pattern, right? Where you have a high around one thirty, this sort of rounded bottoming pattern, maybe a head and shoulders or an inverted head and shoulders pattern. You'd call that completed uh, and validated with a move to the upside, hitting resistance just below one thirty. Now retesting that level. Here's your cup. Here's the little handle. You break above one thirty, which is what you have to do to complete that pattern. That's the trigger, and that would suggest much further, uh, much further upside on a chart like Hess. So some of these energy stocks really improving, making higher lows. As long as they keep making higher lows, uh, that's what's most encouraging. But look for breakouts on some of these names that are re-testing uh, those previous highs. That's a cup and handle pattern. If completed, uh, certainly could measure much, much higher. Our top ranked stock in the uh, stock charts, uh, technical ranking, the scooter ranking uh, at the uh, 99.9th percentile of large cap stocks is Pinduo Duo, which is a Chinese name. Uh, but you can see, again, a nice rotation, kind of similar to Hess in some ways in that we uh, put a high there a couple months ago, rounded bottom, retesting those highs, almost a cup and handle like pattern here as well. And again, very close to validating that by making a new uh, swing high. Now, the difference between this chart and the previous chart is this could be part of a much larger rotation, right? You see a, a big downtrend through the course of 2021, bottoming in 2022. Obviously, a lot of the, the Chinese stocks struggling there uh, uh, along with the broader uh, broader market. But if you draw a trend line from the February 21 high, the October uh, 21 high, you can see how we broke above that, probably retesting that trend line from above and no rotating higher, nice higher low around uh, 45 $46 a share. Uh, nice, uh, nice potential rotation there. Could be a good a natural place for a, a tight stop if you're sort of risk averse, uh, but overall a nice potential rotation. And names like this that rotate and then continue, obviously fairly constructive, uh, broadly uh, broadly speaking about the uh, the markets. I mentioned the strength in the XLY, and a, and a lot of times when you see the cap-weighted version, the XLY uh, outperforming the equal-weighted version, which is the RCD, uh, can tell you that it's dominated by those large uh, or the mega cap names in the space. Three stocks make up about 50% of the weight in the uh, in the XLY. One of those is Amazon. Uh, and again, t t the story of this market, I think in a lot of ways, is the, the chart of Amazon. Low in May, low in June. Nice, uh, very confirmed level of support. Uh, almost a quadruple bottom there, uh, testing it a number of times. Rotating higher, a gap above resistance at 125. That same level now tested from above becomes support. That's a technical concept called polarity, by the way, where resistance become support or the opposite. That's a classic uh, sort of approach. And now we rotate higher. So getting above 145 really completes that rotation. But the fact that we've broken above resistance and now tested that from above is a pretty classic sort of bullish uh, pattern. What's most encouraging besides the fact uh, that we bounced off of support, the fact that the RSI bottomed out right at 40, that's a, that's a, a pretty um, uh, standard look in a bullish phase. In a bullish phase, the market will tend to become overbought on rallies and the RSI won't get much below 40 on a pullback. And that's what Amazon is doing now. So how bad could the market be when a chart like Amazon is showing such a positive rotation to the upside? Here's the chart of Home Depot. While not as attractive, I think, in terms of all the details that I just showed you on the chart of Amazon, still not that bad. It's chopping around the 50-day moving average here right now, but uh, you know potential support here around 285 to 290, uh, and a clear higher low from what we saw in June. So a chart like this holds that 285 level, 290, and this is still uh, constructive. It breaks that, and you have to question the strength in uh, in Home Depot. But overall, potential higher low here to certainly uh, be keeping an eye on. The third one of those is Tesla. Tesla back above its 200-day moving average on Friday's close, continuing to push a bit above there uh, today with the uh, with the stock up about. Uh, one and a half percent. <clears throat> I'm impressed by the relative strength 
showing continued uh, rotation to the upside. I'm also impressed by the higher low with the momentum staying in that bullish range with the RSI staying at 40. That was what I think a big question mark at the beginning of September as charts like this sort of uh, broke below their previous swing low. Does it hold a moving average? Does the RSI hold a key level of support? The answer is yes so far. So is this a raging bullish chart just yet? Not necessarily. And I would say getting above the swing high from August would kind of complete that. So you can see how those three biggest names in the consumer discretionary sector Overall, I would say if I had to pick constructive or destructive, right, positive or negative, I would have to say more positive than negative, but very close to validating this higher low with a nice breakout to the upside. I think that is, you know, when you think about the strength, the potential strength of the markets between here and year end, I think that involves stocks like Amazon and Tesla and Home Depot, you know, making higher lows and continuing to pro progress to the upside. Could be an important chart to uh, to watch there. Finally, here, just to finish off, I want to highlight cruise lines. There's so many different groups we could uh, highlight, but I was struck by the strength in the cruise line names today. Again, a bullish overall configuration for momentum is that the RSI doesn't just stall out at 60, but it goes above 60 and gets to that overbought region. Uh, Royal Caribbean with the RSI above 60, actually nearing the overbought region. The last time it was overbought was back in November of last year. It's been quite some time where it's been more of a bearish range now potentially changing that making a new swing high getting above the august high around 45 dollars holding that i think would be uh, pretty important to a bullish thesis here but overall nice rotation and charts like norwegian cruise lines others uh, seeing a similar pattern of higher lows and potentially breaking out to the upside interesting space space to watch and stocks that have really been unloved for much of 2022. We need to wrap the show folks and go right to that three and three. Let's talk about three charts in three minutes that tell the story of this market environment. Here's chart number one. We didn't talk a ton about breadth today, but I often bring up these charts during the course of the uh, of the week on the final bar. I did want to highlight as the S&P bounced off of 3,900, rotating back to the upside, the S&P regaining its 50-day moving average, 73% of the S&P 500 members can say the same. They are above their 50-day moving average. So literally about seven out of 10 S&P names in a bullish configuration using that as a metric. Now I have a big horizontal line around 50% because I have found in general, if that's above 50%, that means most stocks are in a, above their 50-day. That's usually fairly constructive. If it's below 50%, that tells you the opposite, tells you there's inherent weakness. Late August, we dipped back below 50%, but right back above their earlier this month. And I think that remaining above 50% tells you we're in a bullish configuration, at least based on that one breadth indicator for the S&P 500. Chart number two is looking at Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, we've talked about for quite some time. I have these green lines highlighting these patterns where we've made a new low for the year. Then we make this sort of little uptrend pattern or recovery pattern. And then we break, <clears throat> excuse me, below that trend line support. That happened most recently in May. And then again in uh, June. And then we saw it again here in uh, in late August, right? We had a trend line off the June lows, broke that. And at that point, I'm saying, all right, we have much further downside to be had in, uh, in, in Bitcoin because this looks like a repeat of the pattern. Maybe not. And I think the rally that you've seen for Bitcoin, putting in a bit of a higher low, all of a sudden it starts to look like a very clear level of support on a closing basis. It was right around 18,500, uh, maybe a little bit higher. You can see that's right around where we uh, stalled out in the pullbacks in July. That's right where we tested in September. So you have a pretty good level of support which was uh, once again validated in early uh, early September. We're now rotating to the upside back around, uh, back above 20,000. This chart would have to get above 25K for me to be optimistic on it, but look at the momentum, just finally getting above 60 for the first time since the first quarter. Keep an eye on Bitcoin. Finally, the chart of Meta, we talked about uh, in shifting stocks a number of different individual names to watch. We highlighted a bit about Amazon and some potential strength there, what that means for the consumer discretionary sector and from the broader market. Meta might be one of those really important stocks to watch. Look at how uh, the stock bottomed out in June. And while the rest of the market was rallying significantly, you didn't necessarily get that. You got a more of a rectangle pattern. But now we have a clearly defined range, support around 155, resistance around 180 to 185. Which way do we break above resistance or below support? I bet whichever way Meta breaks, the market probably does the same. Folks, that is a wrap for this show. Thank you so much for joining me on The Final Bar. It's great to be back live, and I hope you all are doing well, staying safe, and staying on the right side of these markets. For StockCharts.com and Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a good night. 
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.